Hello, book friends, and welcome back to the one, the only, all the things, sort of truth podcast. It's the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the sort of truth series with a bowl, no, not that kind of bowl, of craft brew on the side. (laughs) I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And this week, we're going to be talking about chapter eight of Stone of Tears. Yes, we are. I said it right that time. (laughs) (laughs) I also wrote it out that time. Yes, you did. (laughs) (laughs) Teamwork makes the dream work. How you guys doing? Thank you for joining us. We're excited to be doing another chapter this week. Absolutely, we are. I'm doing pretty good. I don't know about all them. They can't respond. I'm doing great. (laughs) (laughs) So this chapter starts the morning after the last chapter ends. Not that kind of morning after, though. (laughs) There was no no sex last night. <laughs> no, but there's got to be a morning after. <laughs> but that's how you know that Richard really isn't faking these headaches. There's there's no funny business. It's not like the last time that they were in the spirit house. They're like not interested in any of that <laughs> shit. Aggressively eating an apple, you mean? Yes. yes <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> no, not this time. She does wake up next to Richard, though, and she's staring at him and she realizes that he does look like Dark and Raw. Yeah, she just assumes it's like somewhere back in the family tree there must be a line. Because obviously they couldn't be related because they live on opposite sides of the world. Right, right. (laughs) Uh, No, it was weird that she makes the distinction that it it can't be a close relation. It has to be a distant relation. Now, granted, this is all speculation. Kaylin does not know what we, the reader, know. Right, it's a little bit, I don't know, almost silly that... She, after seeing Dark and Raw two times in, like, really intense situations, is able to pinpoint that the reason that somebody she's known all along looks familiar suddenly is because of him. Not even him, because of his great, 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 great granddaddy. Yeah. Supposedly. If somebody looks like somebody else, if it's close enough, well, there's probably a reason for that. I think you're right, because she's saying he looks like Dark and Raw specifically. It's not like he looks like the Daharan people. And I think that would be, yeah, the the difference. If it was just far back in the family tree, you'd be like, okay, you just look like people from that general area. Right. Not like, I saw Dark and Raw yesterday and you have his fucking nose, man. <laughs> yeah, he's not a big, blonde-haired, blue-eyed bastard. He's, he's Richard. Yeah. He's gray eyes, brown hair. Right. Much, much different. <laughs> but they're raptor eyes, Nate. Raptor eyes. Well, that's the that's the thing of it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, raptor eyes or predator eyes, which, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Where were you going to go with that one, Jay? Well, just that they're both kind of, kind of like predators, I guess. My point, which is that raptors are predators, and predators have their eyes in the front of their head so they can, like, look for the prey. And prey have their eyes on the sides of their head so that they can keep an eye out for the predators. So, that's all. (laughs) Facts for you. There. (laughs) Now you've learned something today. (laughs) Yeah, that's my animal fact for the day. You're welcome. (laughs) When Kaylin goes to, like, talk to Richard, though, he starts, like, he jumps up really fast. And she didn't realize that he was fucking sleeping because his eyes were open. Yeah, and that's something that I guess only wizards do. We know Zed did this before when he was with Addie. But obviously, Richard being unconscious right now, he's sleeping. He didn't know he was doing it. And he's like, what are you talking about? No, I was sound asleep. Yeah. Dude, I was dreaming. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tell me I was awake. Um, But no, I'm with you. It's It's a creepy look. Yeah. It's It's weird. It's creepy. But I also thought it was like, because Caitlin assumes it's a wizard thing, right? But... Like, one in five people in the real world sleep with their eyes open. I don't know if you knew that. It's, like, really common. One in five? Yeah. (laughs) Really? Yeah. At least sometimes sleep with their eyes open. I didn't think it was going (laughs) to be that high at all. Like, maybe one in a hundred. No. Now, like, my dad is a Vietnam vet. So he does this thing where he sleeps with his arm above his eyes. And I believe he did that so that he can just open his eyes and look at you. But in a dark room, you can't tell that his eyes have opened because he's got his head kind of covering him. But that's not what this is. This is sleeping with your eyes all the way open, Mm -hmm. literally looking. Yeah. 
That's so bizarre. I could only do that if it was pitch black. There's no <laughs> way I could fall asleep with my eyes open. I, people don't try to do it. It's just it's just a thing that happens. I don't know. I started to read up on it, but it, there's a lot there. <laughs> if it's something to where you fall asleep with your eyes closed and then they kind of open when you go unconscious, I could understand that more. I mean, to me, it's just it's way more comfortable to fall asleep with your eyes closed. That's what you want to do when you're tired and you're like, oh, I'm just I've had enough. And then you fall asleep and then maybe they would open after. That would make sense. During the REM part. Yeah. Yeah. Where your body kind of goes into whatever it's doing there. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> well, hey, if any of you out there are eye open sleepers, you should let us know because I would be interested to know if you're a wizard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we learn here that the headache has gotten better. Richard doesn't feel like his face is going to break. Kaylin is still kind of on her new girlfriend vibe, and she's trying to get him to stay home from going shooting today. You know, she would rather him just stay and hang out with her. Yeah. <laughs> she also neglects to tell him that she already kind of told everybody that he wasn't going to show up anyway. Sorry, he's just uh, too much of a pussy to suck it up and go. He won't be there. <laughs> no, I haven't talked to him. I'm I'm saying for him. Like, eesh. Yeah. Oof. I felt like that was a little bit of a misstep because yeah. I feel like if I had gone around the town the night before being like, oh, no, no, he's too hurt. Okay? He can't. He can't. And then the next day you came marching out like you were fine. I feel like somebody would be like, we were told that you were too weak today, yeah. that you weren't going to make it. <laughs> And then what do you have to say? Like, well, I I mean, I'm here, so. Yeah. I made it. She doesn't know what do she's talking thing. about. <laughs> Listen to the woman. What are you talking about? But it's, I mean, it's not really even a thing for Richard. She doesn't mention that to him. But when he wakes up, he's like, well, obviously I'm going. I'll take, you know, some ibuprofen and we'll call it good. Let's go. Right. It's not even a discussion. Like, yeah, yeah duh, I'm going. Um, Bows and arrows and the guys. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> it's like, obviously. Duh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Plus, he can't let Sav down. Like, he promised him he was going to do it. Yeah. Plus, he's got that brand new bow that he made for Richard. Richard yeah. wants to go try that puppy out. I have a present, and you are not going to stop me from getting it and then using it. Right. <laughs> Would you deny me presents, Kaylin? Because <laughs> I will not be denied presents. I feel like if you would deny me presents, we're on a different level than I thought we were. That's a special thing. <laughs> he did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so the two of them head towards breakfast and they hear Sidden telling his dad about all the times he had in the dragon and how it was super fucking awesome. He's being pretty accurate, which is surprising. But then he tells Savidlin he wants a dragon for a pet. <laughs> and Sav is like, no, 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 Scarlet is our friend. Okay, she's a red dragon. We don't control them. You can have a red chicken instead. And what my question is, is why the fuck we were told you could have a dragon for a pet in the very first book by Kaylin? Yeah. When nobody can have a fucking dragon. <laughs> she said we could, Dad. You talk to her. She said we could do it. A green dragon? Totally fine. I want a dragon. Yeah. I totally picture somebody having Spyro on a little leash in their backyard. Well, yeah, if they were cute and little like that. But Scarlet is fucking big. Like, really big. Big enough for several people to sit on her back. <laughs> so, like, they grow. They yeah. grow. You know, <laughs> I totally, totally respect that you couldn't have, like, a scarlet. I wouldn't even think you could own a dragon at all if Kaylin hadn't been like, people do that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Where? She kind of got his hopes up. Where are these people? <laughs> yeah, where are they? How do I become one of them? Because I want a dragon. <laughs> Richard showed up with a dragon, and suddenly Richard is the coolest guy in school. So, make with the dragon. Dragon. <laughs> Thanks. So Richard, during breakfast, after all this dragon talk, decides that he wants to take the tooth he got from Scarlet and put a hole in it so he can, like, string it up. Sav has to show him how to do it, because they obviously don't have power tools. Yeah, essentially, Sav makes this drill. <laughs> he uses spit, a rod sand and his hands and it works like a dream yeah. <laughs> um jade's note here says richard's necklace collection is getting a little nutty <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> he's gonna have to be giving them out soon that's all i'm saying but it did make me wonder if that's something you can really do 
Obviously, I'm assuming that Terry put this in here because it's an actual no shit thing you can do in the real world, which makes sense because I don't know why I feel like he would know something like this, but maybe just in doing his research for Richard. But I would like to try this sometime. We can maybe try it sometime. I feel like I have seen like survival shows like Naked and Afraid and stuff like that that have had things like this happen in them. I know people use a bow drill to start a fire. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. So I guess if it's just using a stick and putting some sand underneath it, if you're trying to use it as just a drill, not to start a fire, then it's essentially the same thing. Yeah. That gets it moving a lot faster with the side-to-side motion, so you could actually... I mean, that makes sense. You you use the sand bits to be the cutting head of the drill, so to speak. I also feel like maybe... Castaway had something like this in it, but that's like dating me a little bit because that was a long time ago. <laughs> I've never seen Castaway. Oh, yeah, we talked about this. <laughs> We're going to have to get us a volleyball and sit down and, and watch, <laughs> spend some time, spend a couple hours watching Castaway. <laughs> Can we name it Carl? I suppose. Perfect. I mean, the original was was Wilson, but uh, we can yell at Carl more than <laughs> I would want to yell at Wilson. So. <laughs> So they're all sitting there and bullshitting, and Sab tells Richard and Kalen about a time when he got wounded and had to be carried home by a whole bunch of women, and ooh, it's a whole, it's a whole little story thing. But he talks about the ten step arrows during the story. I think we knew about these arrows in the last book because we knew that they had poison tipped arrows, right? But they weren't given a name. No, the other reason that we knew that they had poison arrows is it just a couple of chapters ago. Richard noticed that some of the blades were made out of wood, and I believe those are the poison ones because you can dip them in the poison and they soak it up better than something that was made out of bone. So they're called 10-step arrows because you can only walk 10 steps after you get hit by one. So they work really fucking quick. Yeah, it's potent. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Probably not something that they fucked around too much with, right? They're just like, just soak the whole thing in, even if it's way overkill. Nobody is apparently brave enough to just give themselves a little nick on the thumb with like, okay, this was two drops. Let's see how... (laughs) That was it, guys. No, I'm sure that somebody got nicked by one or got shot by one, and they were like, fucking Ted only went 10 steps. Did you see that? (laughs) Fucking Ted. (laughs) You just, you need to watch out. Don't get fucking, don't get hit by this shit. (laughs) So Wesleyan was listening the whole time he was telling the story, and even though she wasn't super thrilled about him mentioning the other women that he was so happy to be carried by, she kind of gets her her claim in at the end, because she's like, well, I knew he felt better when he came to me and we made the baby. So that's how that is. <laughs> Pretty good indicator. Hey, this guy's feeling okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like you can fuck through some pain. Okay. <laughs> yep. But there's a definite point when the good feelings don't overwhelm the bad feelings and it's just time to be done. <laughs> so Caitlin isn't super comfortable discussing this shit, though, with Richard and the kid in the room because they're all just casually talking about how... Winston was healed up. He was he he came to her and fucked, and it's a little uncomfortable over the breakfast table, I imagine. <laughs> and the book does mention Kaylin like having not thought about what she was repeating to Richard until she said it. And it's like, what would have been different? Would you not have said that? Would you like filtered what they're trying to say to Richard? I mean, she has done that a little bit before. Yeah, I feel like she probably would have just omitted and just been like, they're talking dirty. <laughs> shook her head and be like you fuckers oh. never mind what they're talking about don't worry about it and Smithland's like yeah yeah women tell stories too so <laughs> just remember that with a shit eating grin on his right. face I oh, imagine yeah. like, <laughs> so now that Sav is feeling real good about himself he goes and he grabs a bow that he made for Richard it's tall and the weight of the draw is like perfect for Richard he's amazed by it Sav says he figured out the draw by how hard he was hit by Richard the last time he was there. Now, I'm not a boy, bowyer. I don't know. Al told us the word. I believe it's bowyer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm 